Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yep. Okay. This is Dr. Ank, who's going to show us uh, the vent train. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, a baby lung. Of course, we know this is a pretty bad model of a baby lung because this glove has a very good compliance, whereas a baby lung has a pretty bad compliance. But anyway, we want to demonstrate uh, a compliance independent ventilation effect through this straw, which is, uh, I think, uh, 45 centimeter long. Outer diameter 2.66 millimeters, inner diameter 1.66 millimeters. So get your glasses if you want to see the lumen, okay? So first of all, just to demonstrate what flow resistance means, I'm blowing up this, this glove, okay? To the extreme, look at this, okay? I'm disconnecting it. And you see, it's not that much deflating. To get the air out, you have to do this. Okay? Now, you can do it differently. Now, first, the, the flow is here set to 6 liters. And what's this? Most likely, this is all you need to do if you have a baby case. And uh, if you overinflate slightly like this, you can easily you can bring back the volume to a reasonable amount by a little bit more aspir aspirating. Again, overinflating like this, oops, and now actively deflating. And then starting again. So I guess the, the key word is the, the concept of active deflation here. Yeah. Right? And you see, um, the device is activated by occluding this. If this uh, opening, the so-called on-off switch, uh, sort of a bypass where um, air is expirated from the outside, is open, the device is functionally switched off. When I occlude this opening, it will start to suck, as you see here. And if I simultaneously occlude the on-off switch and the outlet, I'm redirecting the flow set at the flometer to the patient. And there's a simple sort of, uh, I shouldn't say simple because it's uh, physics that I don't understand. So what's the effect that gives you that, that, uh, that sort of expiratory phase here? Now, actually, Ventrain is also a high pressure device. Um, it is important to know it is flow controlled, so you can easily estimate how much volume you are administering over time. For example, I've now set the flow to 6 liters. That means if I redirect that flow for one second to the patient, it means insufflation of 100 cc, okay? Um, uh, but anyway, um, the uh, gas is pressurized in front of the jet nozzle, which is here inside the Ventrain device. And at the jet nozzle, high pressure is turned into flow velocity. And this is actually Bernoulli's principle. You know, by increasing the dynamic um, pressure of a gas flowing, uh, you are decreasing the static pressure. And this is Bernoulli's principle. That actually is the principle why planes are flying, uh, which are actually sucked into the air. Yeah? Okay. That's great. And uh, can you just show me the, uh, the catheter that uh, you, uh, you, you, you've you used with this? It's sort of a kink-resistant catheter here. I stopped this for a while? Yeah. Now, this, what I've demonstrated uh, yet, is um, uh, applicable in children, small children. Uh, this cannula is intended to be used in adults. Um, uh, uh, it is a specially designed, a dedicated uh, needle cricothyrotomy catheter. It has a, a, sharp, a sharp stylet. And the neat thing is um, it has sort of a movable flange. And look at this, I can bend, I can bend this catheter pretty extreme without kinking. That's the back. So this catheter, which has a pretty thick wall, aluminum of two millimeters, length of 35 millimeters, um, is uh, most likely not to kink uh, during insertion or while being inserted. So I guess this in, in part is dispelling the myth that you can't ventilate through a small bore catheter right, here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, if if we are uh, the mist bursts right here, that's a nice idea. Yeah. Indeed, the mist is uh, you, you can't ventilate through a straw, and you've seen actually you can. Right. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for your time.
Okay, thank you.